This is the Get Sellers Calling You Marketing Podcast for real estate agents, and I'm Beatty Carmichael. To learn how to generate more listings from past clients in sphere of influence, geographic farming, and commercial investment property, visit our website at GetSellersCallingYou.com. And now, let's begin our next session of Get Sellers Calling You. Well, hello, everyone. We're so excited you've joined us again today. Um, my name is Penny Thomas, for those of you who haven't heard my voice yet, and welcome to this next session of Get Sellers Calling You with Baby Carmichael. Beatty is the CEO of Master Grabber, the creator of Agent Dominator, and one of the top marketing experts in the real estate field. Beatty, I'm excited. What are we going to be discussing today? Well, today we're going to talk about how to increase referrals. Does that awesome. sound like an interesting topic for real estate agents? Uh, yes, I would say a very important one also. Absolutely, very important. In fact, um, uh, I was at a convention uh, it was a uh, so it was a weekend convention, uh, hundreds of real estate agents, and they had a bunch of breakout sessions on the Saturday event that agents could go and choose um, uh, what topic they want to learn. And one breakout session drew, I think it was like two thirds or three fourths of all of the attendees. And all the other breakout sessions, some of them actually had no one attending because this other one drew them all. Can you, can you think what that one topic might have been? Let me guess. Referrals. That's right. How to increase referrals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I was talking to a, another client of ours, and he's a top producer down in Florida. Uh, he's been uh, uh, coaching with a coach for a number of years. And the coach got all of his coaching clients together. It's like 18 or 20 different uh, really strong top producing agents. And they went around the room. Uh, actually, it was a conference call. So they went around the call. And they were asking every single one, last year, where did most of your business come from? Would you like to guess where all but one, my client, uh, all the others, where the bulk of their business came from? Any idea? Hmm. Referrals. Referrals and repeat from past clients. So, hmm. um, so this, if you do it right, can really sustain a business. And especially, think about this, um, Penny. Uh, the real estate world is going into uh, through some pretty dramatic shifts right now. Are you aware of some of those shifts taking place? I've been hearing a little bit, but I'd love for you to expand on that if you can. Well, um, uh, there's shifts with what's called iBuyers. Zillow's moving more into an aggressive competitor. Amazon's looking to get in. There's this uh, a large class action court case dealing with buyer commissions. And the bottom line is all these things are putting immense pressure on what's going to happen in the real estate uh, world as a profession. What do you think would be one of the best things someone could do to protect against all these market shifts that could eat away at their business? Any idea? Obviously, increase. Increase their amount of sales. Yeah, increase sales, but increase referrals and the repeat sales um, mm -hmm. from past clients. And so this is a huge topic because it really can help someone take their business and solidify it and be less susceptible to a range of market forces that they have no control over. And this is one thing that's real interesting is I've worked with our clients, Penny. You have complete control over getting referrals and getting people to do business with you again. You don't have much control over what the market does. So this yeah. is one area that you can really start to control your business. So let me ask you a question as we get into this. Let's assume that you're a, a, a homeowner. And a friend comes to you and says, hey, Penny, I'm thinking about selling a house or thinking about buying a house. Do you have anyone that you would recommend I talk to? So you're going to make a referral, refer a friend to an agent. Here's the question I have for you. Which agent are you most likely to refer? One that you would choose yourself or one that you would not choose yourself? One that I would choose myself, for sure. Yeah. So then the question, if we move into this topic, 
why would you choose one agent over someone else? Okay, so now let me kind of turn the tables just a little bit. Imagine for a moment that you're a real estate agent. What causes someone to choose you over another agent? If you were to try to figure that out, do you have any idea of what that might be? Well, off the top of my head, I would have to say my level of service and commitment to my client, how available I am, and how relational I am. I actually okay. put their needs first. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, that person who has never done business with you before, how do you articulate these things that you're talking about? How do you express to them what you just mentioned? Customer service. Being available for the client, just um, getting to know them. Um, okay. Engaging with them, you know, phone calls, meetings, that kind of thing. Okay. So here's the problem I want to pose. I, um, I actually sat down uh, with three agents when we were thinking about selling our home. And from top producing agents, uh, like the number two uh, sales agent in our suburban city, all the way down to just good producers. And I asked them the question, why should I choose you? over some, one of these other agents that's really qualified. You know what they said? What? I don't know. Hmm. They could wow. not give me a reason why I should choose them over someone else. So wow. think about that. Now think about your answer too, because what you shared with me is what most agents would say. My customer service, I'm available, I'm engaging with them. But how do you really quantify or measure that? But more importantly, hmm. how do you... What do you do to get someone to choose you? I'd like to suggest there's a different reason people choose you than what you just gave. Mm -hmm. And here's the point. Of, here's the thing. What you gave is the reason all agents think people choose them. But when you really boil it down, the reason a homeowner chooses an agent, either personally or to refer them, is for something completely different. It ties into what you mentioned, but it's completely different. And until you know why they choose you, does it make sense it's hard to get them to choose you? Yes. Okay. So if you want them to choose you, we've got to go a little bit deeper, peel back that onion a little bit more, and say what's the fundamental reasons they choose an agent. And once we know why, what that is, then you've got a competitive advantage because now you can start doing things that cause them to choose you more. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, uh, in working with clients, you know, one of the things that um, – uh, has happened over the years is, um, you know, I'll follow up. I follow up with our clients when they just get started with us with Agent Dominator. Uh, once they've been with us for a month or two, and you know, uh, they're starting to get their feet on the ground with us. And I cover this very same topic because this is the most important thing. My goal when I call them is to ensure their success with us. And mm -hmm. success is simple because success is a pattern. But if you fail to do the pattern, you will fail to have the success. So here's what I tell them. People choose you for three reasons, and all three of these reasons have to be present. It's like a stool with three legs. If you take one leg off that stool, what happens to the stool? <laughs> You're going to fall. <laughs> yeah, it kind of falls. Okay. So unbeknownst to most agents, these are the, actually the three reasons people do business with you. And once you can clarify and quantify these, then you can start to act on improving them in the experience. So number one is they like you, right? Do you know mm -hmm. any person that would choose you as an agent if they did not like you? Absolutely not. Okay. The more they like you, is it likely the more they're going to choose you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So liking you... By the way, I just want to, does that have anything to do with customer service, being available, you know, being engaging, or does it, are all those different than simply just liking you? I think it all, I think they all tie together. They all tie together, but as a person, as a friend, I'm going to suggest that those qualities of what you do as a professional are separate from the qualities of what, why someone chooses to like you as a friend. Mm -hmm. 
Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So this liking you starts initially at the very top level. Most powerful is that they really like you as a friend. If you have five real estate agents that you know and one of them is your best friend, which of those five agents are you most likely to choose? My best friend. There you go. Relationship trumps everything else. So that's number one. Number two, so the third, uh, so first they like you. Second, they trust your expertise as a real estate agent. This is where your customer service, this is where you're always available, this is where you are constantly staying on top of things, this is where you understand the contracts, you understand the process of negotiation, you understand what buyers want, you understand what sellers want. It's it's this professional level of expertise within your craft. Okay? Mm-hmm. The third reason they choose you is they you happen to be top of mind at the time that they're thinking about choosing an agent. I mean, if you're not top of mind, then you're never going to be chosen, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so all of these kind of tie into each other. You know, if you were to put them like in circles on a page, they all kind of overlap to a degree, but they all have different functions. And I want to walk through... Uh, uh, how do you do that? So let me ask you, if I were to ask you, Penny, how do you get someone to like you? What would you tell me? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, that's a really, that, that's a broad question. <laughs> I think it depends on the person. Um, I would have to get to know their needs and the things that make them feel liked. You know, some people feel liked when you buy them a gift. Some people feel liked when you spend time with them. Some people feel liked when you do a service for them, some sort of act of service. Yep. So I think I'd have to get to know the person first and kind of figure out what it is that makes them feel liked. Okay. And I would probably, from a business standpoint, I'd probably try to like them in that way. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, now, you're married to Brian, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, when Brian was dating you, how did you grow to like him? Spending time with him. Ah. Lots of time. So that, that's just a simple answer. You just spend time with people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, if you want to get someone to trust your expertise, how do you do that? Hmm. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a simple answer, um, but I think integrity has a lot to do with it. Okay. All right. Um, how do you get someone to always remember you? Keep, well, uh, keep I would, your you top of mind with them. I would need to stay in contact with them um, in multiple ways, whether it's a phone call, text message, email, um you know, planning to take them to coffee or something like that so that I'm always on their mind. Okay. So here's kind of where I'm going with all these simple questions. For someone to want to choose you or refer you, they have to like you, trust your expertise, and you have to be top of mind. All you have to really do is ask ask yourself those questions. How do I get someone to like me? How do I get someone to trust me? Not trust me as an individual, that's important, but trust me as a professional in my trade of selling real estate. Mm -hmm. How do I get someone to always remember me? I'd like to go through just a real short synopsis of how to do all these things because this is the key to getting referrals. If they like you a lot, if they trust your expertise a lot, and if you happen to be top of mind, does it... Does it make any, does it make sense that you're absolutely going to be getting that referral when they when someone asks them who should I use as a real estate agent? Yes. Yeah. So it's really not this a uh, mystery. It's just stopping, slowing down, and saying what's really at play and how do we do it. So let me talk about liking you first, okay? Okay. So ultimately, everything you said about liking is absolutely correct. But I like to try to simplify it a little bit more. Ultimately, a relationship is all about, do you truly value me as a person? When you were spending time with Brian, did it, 
Was it clear that he valued you as a person? Yes. And the more he valued you, did that kind of make you value him more? Yes. Yeah. So the question then is how do you go about and just making people know that you value them? Let me, let me suggest. How about if I call you up? I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. You're a friend. Hey, Penny, how's it going? What, would, what do you say? Great. All right. Oh, we're doing yeah. fine. It's a beautiful day. The kids are great. Are your kids home from college or high school? Yeah, home from high school. <laughs> home from high school. I know how that works. Well, um, hey, by the way, um, do you know anyone who's thinking about buying or selling a home anytime soon? I do, actually. My neighbor. Okay. Let me pull out. Do I value you as an individual or as a sales prospect from that call? Both. Which way do you, so when I finish hanging up the call and you were to ask yourself, what was Beatty's motivation in calling me? What comes top of mind of my motivation? Personal well, or sure. business? I, business, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's, the, here's the interesting thing about relationships. Relationships are fragile. All it takes is one inclusion that is not an authentic relationship and it turns the table on the entire experience and takes away from the authentic portion of that relationship. Does that make sense? Did I confuse yeah. the wording? Okay. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. So, so what happens in a relationship, it's, it's, it's a sensitive situation. And the, if you want to get people to like you, your contact with them needs to be purely relational not business. Mm-hmm. Business will come if they like you. But if you ask for business, immediately that engagement you had with them is perceived as entirely self-centered, self-motivated, simply to get business, and that it really had nothing to do with you as a person. Mm-hmm. So let's role-play that scenario one more time. Hey, Penny, it's Beatty. How's it going? Hey, it's great. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing super. Are the kids home from high school now? They are, yep, getting ready for the holidays. Oh, I, I know that's wonderful. Tell me about them. Okay, you don't have to go any further. But now the whole conversation is just about you, the kids, the you know, husband, how life is. We shared something. And then I say, hey, you know, hey, I've got to run. Uh, I've got an appointment coming up. But I just want to give you a quick call. I hadn't, thought of, uh, I hadn't talk, spoken with you in a while. Have a great day. Talk soon. Click. And I hang up. Now, at that moment, you ask yourself, what was Beatty's motivation of that phone call? What comes to mind? Just checking on me, just saying hi, being friendly. Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Yes, absolutely. Does that make you feel that I value you as a person and as a friend? Yes. Is that tough to do? No. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) Do most agents do that? No. No. So here's the key. The easiest thing you can do in the world, most agents don't do because they get too busy, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, I feel led to ask this question. If your husband gets too busy to value you as his wife, what does that do to your marriage? Not good things. Not good thing. You could actually lose a marriage by being too busy, by not focusing on the little things that are most important, because you get deceived that it's the big things that are really the important things in life, and we lose out on the relationship. And I would mm-hmm. like to suggest that what you do in building your real estate business is very much the same. It's the little things you do in just touching people. Yeah. That's the most important thing. So now, let's go a step further. Let's take that same scenario. I call you up. We just have a little fun chat. It doesn't last long, but I leave the phone call, and you're thinking, I really like Beatty. He thought of me. Now, imagine the next day or two, you get a note from me. Penny, it was so good talking and catching up with you. So excited about the kids. Um I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful 
of uh, holiday season. And I sign it, Beatty. What mm -hmm. does that do to your, your feeling of my value to you at that point? Does it increase it? Yes. Do you start to do you start to want to reciprocate that relationship with me? Does it make you like me more? Um, yeah. Yeah. And the more you like me, more likely you're going to choose me as an agent, the more likely you're going to refer me, okay? Yeah. So what yeah. I'd like to suggest is to get someone to like you and to keep them liking you even more. It's just a periodic reach out. You could even do it by text. Hey, Penny, how's it going? Just thinking about you. What's up? Now, a text is a bad de default to a phone call, but it's a nice little touch when it has no ulterior motive behind it. But mm -hmm. the phone call is the best because now you can interact, you can ask questions, you can share about you. They get to know you more. They get to, you get to know them more. It's just catching up. And then if you'll follow up with that, with a handwritten note, I suggest that that handwritten note is on your real estate stationery. In fact, if I were a real estate agent, I'd get a bunch of uh, note cards printed with my name and my real estate brand and my real estate information, and I would handwrite you a note on my real estate card. If my, note, if, if my personal note comes to you on my real estate card, does that detract in your opinion from the authenticness of my note in other words if I, penny it was so great talking with you love catching up hope you guys have a great holiday and i sign it does it detract at all if it's coming from my personal stationery versus my business stationery um actually i would feel like it was more heartfelt if you actually hand wrote it right okay so i hand write it but I handwrite it, and it happens to be on my work stationery. Does that cause any consternation on your end? If you were to get that bit, note, yeah. <laughs> does it? A okay. Bit, yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, it may be imperceptible. It may be more. But here's what I've found. And talking with one of our uh, one of my friends who's been selling real estate for, uh, gosh, thirty years now, he may actually made a comment. He said, "Beatty." Uh, I've never advertised for business. I've never spent any money to get business. I've always had as much business as I want, in fact, so much that I actually turn business down. And you know his mm. number one thing that he does? Calls people. That's right. He just makes these simple phone calls, and he writes them a short note on his business stationery. That's it. Wow. Mm. And here's what happens. They like him, and they remember that he's a real estate agent. Top of mind, they like yeah. him. And by vicariously, the fact that he's in business so long, they trust that he probably has expertise unless he's actually done business with them, and then they know that he has expertise. So this is really, really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. and, and by putting that little thank you note on a – personal on your business stationery instead of real estate, it might have a slight uh, detrimental effect, you know, slightly uh, degrade the touch, the value of that touch. I don't think it'd be much, but what it does is it reinforces two things. I like you as a friend, but then you see me uh, as a real estate agent as well, so it keeps that top of mind. Uh, something else you can do, you mentioned this, uh, some people love gifts. If I were to drop by your house uh, say, uh, even if you're not there and I just leave, you know, uh, uh, some cookies for some brownies. Hey, I was in the area. You know, I'm normally not out this way. I was in the area. Dropped by. got some brownies for you guys. Hope you enjoy it. Does that make you feel good? Oh, gosh, yes. Does that increase my, no pun intended, does that increase my brownie points in your mind in terms <laughs> of our relationship? For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so so this is something else you can do. Just a little drop by. Just say, even if you don't have a gift, hey, I was in the area to, uh, showing a house over here to another client. I remembered you were here. I just want to drop by and say hello. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. So these are the little things that go a long way. 
Um, now let's talk about being a little bit more strategic, okay? So we got the relationship thing. You know, make sure people like you. They like you because you value their relationship and you demonstrate it because you reach out to them. And when you reach out to them, you mention nothing about real estate. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, it's okay if you ask me, hey, Beatty, how's, the, you know, how's real estate going? Oh, man, you know, it's going really great. And if I share a little bit, that's okay because I did not volunteer it until you asked it. So it's still a personal yeah. call, okay? But yeah. something you can do is take your list of friends, past clients, people you know, and identify those people who are a what I'll call in a connector role. Do you have an, any idea of what a connector role might be? Um, if I had to guess, I'm assuming it's um, just people that, uh, like if I'm my neighbor, I have a connection with her, and then she knows somebody else. Yeah. Like that chain. Yep. So people who know other people. Uh, so let me give you an idea. Let me, let me see if I can kind of lead this discussion just a little bit. You've got uh, two people on your list. One person is a local Little League coach, and another person is a computer programmer who works from home. Which Mm -hmm. of those two people do you think would probably be more likely to be a connector to other people for you? Um, The first one. And why is that? They're outside the home. Outside the home. I'd like to see. So there's one more element. Can you figure out what that element is? Why is the first one, the little, the little league coach, more likely to become a good connector for you than the work-at-home programmer? Because he knows so many other people. That's it. That's yeah. exactly it. So if you go through your list and ask yourself, Who is likely to know a lot more people? A lot of times, simply by nature of their job, you can determine that. A hairdresser, a bank teller, a little league coach, the choir director, a pastor, a youth minister. I mean, I could kind of go down the list, but they all have one thing in common. Their job, their occupation, involves working with a lot of people on an ongoing basis, repeat Mm -hmm. people in the local area. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. If you were to to befriend the programmer and befriend the Little League coach, which one do you think you would likely get more referrals from? The Little League coach, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So that's what I call a connector. And I suggest that you go through your list of people and you start to mark Okay, first off, let's make sure you have a list, right? You create a written list, okay? And then you identify those people who are connectors by virtue of the fact of how many people they probably know locally, okay? So this would be those people who are just life of the party, they love people, and they know everyone. They may not have a job that is a connector-type job, but that's their personality, that's who they are. Um, my brother, by the way, is that one. He knows everyone in town. And um, mm-hmm. uh, and then you, uh, those who have the other jobs that constantly have a, a flow of people coming through, those people who are connectors, you want to be a lot more strategic with this relationship building. You want to pop by. You want to actually put it on sort of a schedule, maybe every four to six weeks, drop by. So let's say that you work at the bank. You're a bank teller, okay? I'm going to swing by. Hey, Penny, I was in the area again. Brought you some donuts. How are you? Know, how are things? Now, and I might look at the other tellers. Now, y'all can't eat any of these donuts without Penny's permission. These are hers, okay? <laughs> so, I'm, right? Okay. So you, you feel special, right? Well, yes. so now I've made you feel really special. The more I do that, when you hear someone coming through. You know, they're the little old lady, you know, or that, uh, or that, you know, someone coming through the telling, tell, uh, teller slot, and you're engaging with them because they're one of your normal clients type of things, and they're starting to talk about, uh, you know, they're thinking about selling their home. Who's the first person you're likely going to think of referring them to? You are. 
Yeah. And when I swing by that day to bring you donuts, are you likely going to remember to say, oh, you know what, did so-and-so call you because I was talking to so-and-so and they're thinking about selling their house? You think you might mm-hmm. actually remember? Yeah. So yeah. The, con- the connectors are going to have their ear to the ground because they're involved with all kinds of people all the time. And the stronger the relationship, the more you pursue that relationship, the more likely two things are going to happen. They're going to refer you, and when you happen to pop by, then they're going to bring back to remembrance, oh, you know what, you're the real estate agent. This person was saying just a week ago they're thinking about selling, and it's going to remind you to tell me because I'm actually there. I can't, mm-hmm. In fact, I can't tell you how many people have told me so when they start using our services, you know, we guarantee results, but one of the things that we require when we guarantee it is that you have to at least call your prospects, you know, a couple of times yeah. a year. I can't tell you how many times people have told me, you know, when I'm just on the phone and I'm talking to them, I'll, I'll pick up a deal because they've been getting the postcards, they're getting the emails, they're being reminded of me, and now when I call them, it's like, oh, you know what? I, a friend of mine is thinking about selling. You ought to call them. It's that in, engagement, that interaction that prompts them to remember about the referral. So mm-hmm. really, really powerful. Um, uh, so, so that's getting them to like you. Back to the question, how do you get someone to like you? You like them back. That's the easy mm-hmm. answer. You do those things yeah. that let them know they li- you like them. Second thing um, uh, so we go back to the stool. Three reasons people choose you. They like you. They trust your expertise. And you happen to be top of mind when they're thinking. You're listening to the Get Sellers Calling You podcast. If you want more listings from past clients and sphere of influence, from geographic farming, and even from commercial investment properties, check out our marketing service named Agent Dominator. We guarantee closed sales or give your money back. Learn more at GetSellersCallingYou.com and select Agent Dominator from the menu. And now, back to the podcast. So let's talk about trusting your expertise. Um, Here is the challenge. In marketing, there's a concept known as outside perception versus inside reality. Here's what it means in real estate. Let's say, Penny, that you are a real estate agent. And you want to market to a group of homeowners. That group could be people that you know. They're your personal list. Or that group could be people that are just in a neighborhood. By the way, let me ask you a question. Is there fundamentally any real difference between someone you know who lives in a home and someone you don't know who lives in a home? In other words, let me... No, there's, there's no difference. The only difference is you have a relationship with one but not with the other, but they generally they have the same likes, same desires, same feelings, okay? And, mm-hmm. and, and what we find is this. The typical homeowner believes that all real estate agents are the same, that all they do is stick a sign in the yard, list a home in the MLS, and wait for someone else to bring a buyer. Would you agree that that's probably what most homeowners believe to be true? Yes. Yep. So let's say that you are a top-notch, dedicated real estate agent. You serve your clients better, far better than the typical real estate agent. But as long as those homeowners believe that you're just like anyone else, are they more likely to choose you over someone else? They believe you're just like everyone else. Are they going to choose you or are they going to choose someone else just as easily? Just as easily they would pick someone else, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the implication, real simple. If all agents are the same, it doesn't matter who I choose to sell my house. I'm going to get the same result, same price and the same amount of time with one agent over another. But let me ask a different question. Let's assume that that those people on that list, your personal list or that neighborhood, if they understood your skill and your expertise – and they understood it to the same degree that you understand it about yourself, would they realistically choose any other agent besides you? No. Okay. So that's what we call your inside reality. Their outside perception is you're like everyone else, so there's no reason to choose you. But your inside reality is there's lots of reasons to choose you. 
if you could transfer your inside reality to them so they know as much about you as you know about yourself, would that drive a lot more business, do you think? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And fundamentally, why? Because there's a connection established. Instead there's a con- of, yep. yeah. A connection. Mm-hmm. They know more about you, right? Mm-hmm. Let me go back to reason number two. If they understood your inside reality, then does that mean that now they are trusting your expertise? Yes. Yeah, because your inside reality is your expertise. And if they don't know your expertise, they can't trust it. And therefore, on that stool with three legs, you're missing one leg. Hmm. So what do you think would be a simple way to help them trust your expertise? Oh, gosh. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> same, same thing most, most real estate agents say. Oh, gosh, I have no idea. Okay, because yeah. I've never thought about this. Let me tell you the easiest thing. Okay, so let's uh, let me let me pose it in a, as a question to you. Uh, you're thinking, uh, you you know, five real estate agents. You're going to be selling your home. You know, five real estate agents, and one of them, you see all the time making another sale, listing another house, closing another sale, all the time. Boom, boom, boom. Sold again, sold again, sold again, just listed, just listed, sold again, sold again. And the other four agents, you don't see anything about them. All you know is they're real estate agents. Out of those five agents, which one are you going to choose? (laughs) The one that's always selling, for sure. Do you think you trust that they probably have greater expertise than the other four? Yes. And what was your reasoning behind that? Um, sort of the proof is in the pudding, you know, if I'm always yeah. being sold, sold, sold by the same person, then I know, okay, they're actually selling houses. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. Isn't yeah. that easy? Isn't that, I mean, yeah. that's, so the st- the first step is simply showing off your successes all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. The way you transfer expertise is you get them to start to trust you more than someone else and the first level of trust is are you actually doing what you're supposed to be doing are you selling homes that's the first level but then there's some things you can do to increase that level of trust and they're really simple any ideas what you might be able to do to increase the trust just beyond showing off yourself um probably you would need to offer something some sort of guarantee maybe Mm, uh, you could. That that definitely helps. But, but before we get to that more complicated thing, let me ask you a question. You now have, okay. you now have those five real estate agents. Two of them you see are constantly selling. Three of them you don't see anything. So now it's a choice between those two. One of them you see sold, sold, sold. The other one you see sold for full price, sold in three days, sold for two thousand over asking price. Now, which one do you choose? That one, because I'm getting more specifics about ah. not only are they selling, but they're selling for more and they're selling faster. Bingo. Okay, so now we add a little bit more information that causes them to trust you more because you're now telling a little bit more about why they should. I sold this home in three days. That's impressive. I sold this home for full price. That's impressive. So the mm-hmm. more you get to share the inside reality of that sale, the more they start to trust you that maybe you can do the same for them. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. Now let's take it a step further. What do you think, before we get to a guarantee, before you, uh, uh, what do you think is something else I could do to get someone to trust me even more than simply saying, Sold in three days or sold for full price or something like that? Tell me. (laughs) I can share what I did to cause it to sell that fast. For example, Mm -hmm. before I put this home on the market, we pre-marketed it for an entire week, mailing to the neighborhood, 
door knocking, letting people know the home is about to come on the market, and if they have any friends that want to be in this area, let them know. Okay, you know, we started to, uh, uh, we went through the house, and we made sure everything was absolutely perfect in order. No, no dust, no, no burned out light bulbs. If there was a room, there was a room that was kind of an awkward color, we had the owner change it back to kind of a neutral color, it took away everything that could have been a detriment that would cause someone to go, ugh, that's just not quite a good feel. In other words, the level of preparation and the level of pre-marketing I did sold this home faster. Now, if I were to tell you that, does that give you greater confidence in my expertise? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so, yeah, so, so, and then, you know, I could say, I even guarantee to sell it in X days or I pay you, or I could do all kinds of things. But trusting your expertise starts with just showing them that you're always selling, then showing them what's going on with those sales, explaining some more information behind it that shows what you did. Now, what you did may be what every agent does, but the homeowner doesn't know that because mm-hmm. no agent tells them. Yeah. So, so that's the second leg. Okay. So, back to why does someone why does someone choose you as an agent? They like you. They trust you, your expertise, and then you happen to be top of mind. So, um, on top of mind, do you, have you ever heard in selling the ABC of selling always be closing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, there's an ABC in real estate. It's always be contacting. Right. If you want to stay top of mind, you're just always there. Yeah. And this is where the automated remote touch systems are in place, come in place. So if you think about this, only you individually can get someone to like you. Your touches need to be personal. Hey, how's it going? Just thinking about you. Hey, I was thinking about you last week. You know, hadn't spoken with you in a while. Just want to call and say, hey, okay. Only you can do those. Your assistant can't do them. But mm-hmm. everything else in terms of trusting your expertise and staying top of mind, you can now automate that. You can send those out in postcards. You can do an email campaign. You can do social media and constantly be posting, you know, posting, you know, just listed another home to Facebook. And so all your friends are seeing that. They're seeing that activity. You can share, you know, write a little explanation of what you did to sell this home in five days. All that can be done in an automated fashion, but you need to be consistent in, in doing that. Um, uh, but part of that is going to be your personal touches because that's another contact. Uh, part of that's going to be writing those little handwritten notes or doing a pop by. But it's more, you know, staying top of mind is more than that. It's, it's doing all these other things. So now, with that as, uh, um, uh, as a backdrop, I want to talk a last couple of steps about how to realistically put this together. But before I go there, do you have any questions on any of this or how to do it or anything that's cropped up as we've been talking on it? Um, I don't, actually. I'm interested to hear um, just sort of this last little part and, and the, the staying top of mind and strategies for, because I can, I can see a lot of agents maybe saying, what's the best way to stay top yeah. of mind? Uh, let me ask you a question before we get there. Okay. What do you think is the number one reason people, agents aren't consistently touching their personal contacts? I think for sure it's they're too busy. Too busy. They don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. They're too busy, don't have time, and they're not prepared. Mm. Are, are, you, are you a busy mom, busy employee? Yes. <laughs> Busy Very. wife? Okay. Yes. Have you gotten more accomplished in all your roles by bringing structure and knowing what you need to do and having things prepared to do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a simple thing. If most agents would just create a little bit of structure, then they can easily fit this in their day. The reason they don't do it is they don't have the structure in place. And it doesn't take that yeah. much effort. So let's go through the action that's items. That's so true. Yeah, that's yeah, so it, true. So let, let's put a little bit of structure in place that takes very little time. Number one, make a list. You know the easiest way to start making a list of who all your friends are? Just 
uh, going through your phone contacts. <laughs> yeah, go through your phone contacts and go through your Facebook friends. Yeah, that's good. I mean, there's a list right there. So yeah. write it down in one spot. Mm-hmm. And then you go through and strategically add contact info. What's their phone number and what's their mailing address? Okay? And if you don't know their phone number or their mailing address or an email address, you probably have them on Facebook to send a quick message. Hey, I'm updating my records. Can you give me your mailing address? Yeah. You know how many people would give you your mailing address, their mailing address oh. if you asked for it? Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them, yeah. So yeah. ask for it, okay? So you put your list together, and then this is real important too. You want to categorize your list by A, B, and C, okay? Everyone you know, okay? A, B, and C. Here's the simple way of what I understand for this to be most effective as a real estate agent. A's are going to be those people that you have the closest relationship with. The easy way to understand if you have a close relationship is if you know their spouse's name and you know their children's names, okay? And that they know your spouse and your children's name. In other words, the more you know about them, it's going to be an A. Mm -hmm. So then the B's are going to be the people that you have a relationship with with them individually, but you, it doesn't go much further. So this would be like your work relationships. You know John down at the, uh, you know, down on the second floor? You see him a lot, but you really, you've never met his wife. You don't really know much about the kids. Mm-hmm. That's a B relationship. A C relationship would be someone that is, um, you, no pun intended, you see them only once in a blue moon, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but you don't know much about them, so they'd be a C, okay? So you start with mm-hmm. your A's and B's, and you then go through and list everyone that is going to be a connector. And if I have a B or a C that is a connector, I want to move them to an A because that A is the priority. Mm-hmm. And I want to build a relationship with them strategically because I, I want that relationship now. So that's, so you're going to make the A's, B's, and C's. <clears throat> then, depending on how big the list is, you narrow it only to the A's or the B's, uh, or you include some C's. But generally speaking, like if we're targeting, so when we work with real estate agents to help them market to their clients, um, you know, four or 500 people is fine because so much of the marketing can be automated. But those mm-hmm. that maybe they're personally touching may only be like 200, okay? So yeah. uh, it depends on what you're doing. But then the, the next step is once you make the list is be strategic. An easy way to be strategic, if you don't have a fancy system, you put it all on an Excel spreadsheet and you just load it, load it to Google Docs. Because on Google Docs, you can access it from your phone and you can access it from your computer. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay. And then all you do is you put a column on the Google Docs that says, date last touched. And mm-hmm. you just scroll through your list. You know, I've got five minutes before an appointment. I'm out, on, I'm out on the road, so I'm going to pull up my phone, go to Google Docs, and find the next person on my list that I haven't touched recently. Their phone number is going to be there, and I'm going to reach out. Hey, Penny, it's Beatty. How are you doing? I hadn't thought, spoken to you in a while. Just wanted to visit. Had a couple minutes. And then, oh, my appointment's here. Got to run. Okay, so it's a natural end of the conversation, but you like it. I've touched you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write you a handwritten mm-hmm. note. Now I've got mm-hmm. a system in place, and it doesn't really take much time. Mm-hmm. So uh, structure that approach, and working from the list means that now you can go through that list and touch everyone. So let's go back, and I just want to review a couple of key things, okay? Back to okay. why do people choose you? They like you. They trust your expertise. You happen to be top of mind. Your personal touch, 100%, needs to be authentic relationship only. Mention nothing about your business unless they ask you. Don't Mm -hmm. ask for a sale. Don't ask for a referral unless they volunteer it or the conversation just naturally goes that way. But make give them no reason to believe that the motivation of that call was for business purposes. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Now, let me put this back in perspective. So I'm reaching out. I'm touching you. We say hello. I'm checking on the kids. I write you a handwritten note. A couple weeks later, I may say, say hello again. A couple weeks later, I may call and say, hey, question. 
Do you know anyone who's thinking of buying or selling a home? Does that spoil the relationship that you and I have built simply by asking that as a friend? Um, oh, gosh, that's a trick question. <laughs> I don't think it, 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 should, it shouldn't be a trick question. So you and I are friends, and I've <laughs> demonstrated that over time, and then I ask and say, hey, you know, you know, know anyone who's thinking of buying or selling a home? Does I that think... spoil the relationship? No, as long mm-hmm. as you, like you said, you have made that that connection and stayed in contact with me on a regular basis, and it's not like you're just calling me out of the blue. That's right. Um, yeah. That's right. So here's the here's the key. It's okay to ask for business, but make sure you've established and nurtured the friendship first, and make sure you do it on a call that is strictly business related. Don't try to make it a personal call and then throw business into it. So keep the personal calls completely separate, and then as a separate event, you can ask for business on another call, and it's not going to spoil the relationship as long as the, the, um, the momentum of what your touches are, your, you know, as long as your, the, your touches are really focused, generally speaking, on the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's your personal touch. Then your automated touches are rarely personal. Okay, this is where you get postcards set up. And by the way, as we're putting the structure in place, okay. Uh, so let's talk about automation. Okay. Uh, let me ask. Let me ask you. Um, what do you think is more important, content or technology? Content. Content. Exactly. Content is what you say. Technology is how you deliver what you say. So don't get caught up with, you know, I've got this real fancy, you know, super-duper email autoresponder system with artificial intelligence, and it, it, you know, that doesn't, (laughs) that, you know, that's great, but it's the content that's most important. Don't get caught up with, well, I've got this, you know, uh, automated postcard marketing system already. I just buy it off the shelf from this company. Well, it's a content not the technology. So make sure you focus on the content. On the content, a couple of things you really, the thing you really want to focus on, what is the core message you want them to always remember about you? Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, What is that that makes you unique, that makes you special, that gives them a reason to want to choose you? Okay? And you want to make sure that that content is always there. You also want to be on the receiving end of that content and make sure, is this something they really want to get from me? That like an email, okay? If if yeah. your e- if your email campaign is sending out an email during springtime that says it's springtime, it's time to plant flowers, and that's the whole focus of the email. That's going to tick your people off because mm-hmm. that's a you know you just wasted my time to tell me the obvious, okay? Mm-hmm. So make sure that what you're putting out is um, uh, is good. And then the last thing, and this is where a lot of agents also fail. Um, Years back when we started working with real estate agents, uh, and we were asking, why are you doing business with us? And a lot of these are top producing agents that were that are doing business with us, and they gave me two answers. One is, I need help in making this happen because I don't know what to do. The other, and about 50-50, the other half says, I know what to do, but... I keep starting it, and then something comes up, and I stop it, and it's a year or two before I remember that I've stopped it, and I need to get back into it, and I'm just not consistent, okay? So the way that you build that consistency is and is you create everything up front, and then you what I call lock and load, and then you do put on autopilot so you don't have to do it. If you have to touch it every single week to get another email out, every single month to get another postcard out, you will fail, Mm-hmm. Because you will get busy, you're gonna. It's like a diet. You break the diet. You cheat on your diet. You know, one meal, and you know it's three or four one, months before you realize I'm off my diet because you just totally lost it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So you got to create everything up front and lock and load, and then put it on autopilot so you don't have to touch it again. If you don't do that, then you're most likely going to. Uh, be the yo-yo person. You start it, you stop it. You start it, you stop it, and it's never going to um, uh, really work for you. 
Uh, and so with that, can I put a, 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 a an unabashed plug for what we do with Agent Dominator? Absolutely. Okay. I know you would say that since I pay your paycheck, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so everything we're talking about here is what we built into Agent Dominator. The reason it works is not because Agent Dominator is a, fast, is a fabulous system. It is. The reason it works is not because Agent Dominator does what most agents don't do. It does. The reason it works is not because we have some fancy technology that no one else has. We do. But the reason it works is because it's right down the middle of the best practices of what you ought to be doing anyway. If you mm -hmm. can constantly personally touch, constantly educate them on what creates your, tr you know, why they should trust you, and constantly say top of mind, you don't need any other system out there. Just like my friend I was sharing about earlier, has more business than he can, than he ha can handle. He turns it away, and he's never spent a dime in marketing because mm -hmm. he stays on top of it. But yeah. most people don't stay on top of it. Most people don't really know how to do it. And what we do with Agent Dominator is we do it all for you, okay? And we, as long as you're willing to pick up the phone and call or write a handwritten note to your personal contacts, uh, we actually guarantee your results. So I would just encourage you to um, uh, check that out. And here's something also real cool. Uh, because a lot of agents, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but especially the, the long-term producers, sell both residential and commercial. And so if that's actually one of you guys listening to this call, we do agent dominator with commercial as well on the investment properties because the folks who own investment properties are very similar to those who own houses, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if I own yeah. a little apartment building or a gas station, I also own my home. It's, you know, I'm not an institutional investor. I just happen to have some real estate investment. And so finding listings there, getting them to choose you in the investment world is very similar to what you do in the residential world. So love to, uh, uh, So the, anyway, that's our plug. Um, before we wrap this call completely up, is there anything that comes to mind that you'd like to ask or comments that you'd like to share? Um, you know, I think I would just, um, and this is probably just me speaking from a personal standpoint, but I would encourage agents to offer um, above and beyond um, what other agents around them are offering. And I think that would be a great way for them to uh, capitalize on referrals. You know, it goes back to the trust thing and, and getting their name out there and, um, and really attracting business. I feel like they need to make themselves stand apart. Um, that's something that helped us choose our agent. We knew that he was offering something that other agents were not. Um, yeah. In addition to the fact that we always saw sold, sold, <laughs> you know. Makes a difference, so, doesn't yeah. it? You know, you bring up one thing. I, I, I'm a miss because I totally forgot it. So let me add it now at the end. This is a this is bonus material. Great. If you're I love if bonus you're one material. of my yeah, <laughs> if you're one of my friends, and you refer me a client. And I send you a really special gift as a thank you note. What does that do to you? How do you respond? Oh, does that I feel make great. you feel special? Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you more likely to refer me again? Yes. Yes. So don't go cheap on that referral gift, and don't give it only if that person that has been referred actually does business with you. The simple yeah. fact that Penny, you referred someone to me. I'm going to woo you because I want more of that, okay? So yeah. that, that's the bonus for, for today's call. That's great. All well, right. Beatty, this was a great call. Thank you so much for your time and expertise today. Um, before we close out, do you have any last-minute things that you want to share with our listeners? I really don't, unless uh, if you want more information about Agent Dominator, you can go to agentdominator.com. There's a little form there you can fill out. Um, and um, if you love this type of teaching, visit our website at GetSellersCallingYou.com, and you can find all kinds of other content there as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, I wish everyone uh, uh, a great uh, week and a successful uh, time in their business, whatever they're doing. And uh, thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, baby. Thanks. Y'all have a blessed day. 
If you've enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to it so you never miss another episode. Also, if you want an easy way to grow your business, check out Agent Dominator. We guarantee listings and sales from past clients in sphere of influence, geographic farming, and commercial investment properties. If you don't get the sales, we promise we'll give your money back. Learn more on our website at GetSellersCallingYou.com and select Agent Dominator from the menu. Thanks for listening to the Get Sellers Calling You podcast and have a great day.